This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. It is, and we are taking your calls. Weigh in on the cases that we are discussing every day here. 888-554-5537. 888-5-KILLER is that phone number. You can call it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And weigh in with your opinion. Tony Bruschi and Stacy Cole with you. Uh, to go through these calls, let's go to one regarding Alec Murdaugh. Yes. Hey, Tony. This is Christy calling from Los Angeles. Um, I am a huge fan of your podcast. I've been listening to every episode since day one of it being just four killed for what. Um, so thank you so much for uh, just holding a space for for this conversation about all of this. It's fascinating. It's insightful. It's helpful. And I'm just a really big fan of yours. Uh, anyway, I just uh, wanted to, to give some thoughts on um, Alex Murdaugh. So I think that it's frustrating to hear so much about the defense, their press conference about how they're going to appeal. And because they're just saying that, like, their main grounds for appealing has to do with them allowing the, um, the financial crimes. And it just makes it look like Alex is this bad guy. But it's like Alex is making Alex look like he's this bad guy, even if they only put the Ferris fees in there, which is what the defense wanted, even if they didn't go through all of the other financial crimes. Like Alex admitted on the stand that he lied about the most important possible thing that he could have lied about. And he didn't just lie right away when he was maybe not in his right mind. He lied for a year and a half and never, ever, ever would have told the truth if he wasn't forced to because it was on trial and they had a bunch of people come in and, and say, yes, a hundred percent, that's him. So I think, you know, financial crimes or not, like Alex is the one that did that. And I think that like, you don't really need any evidence other than the timeline, in my opinion, because the way that Creighton Waters put it, I thought, I mean, he, I thought his cross-examination wasn't amazing of Alex, but I do think his strongest point, which I, I don't hear talked about enough on, on your podcast, I, in my humble opinion, is that who else could have done it? Like, you don't, I know that nobody needs to prove beyond a reasonable doubt another person, but there's just no reasonable conclusion now that we have this kennel video and we know with certainty that Alex was there at 8.44 p.m. and that they were killed at 8.49 p.m. Like, we know that for a fact because Alex is on the video at 8.44 and he even admitted now, but I don't take much of what he says uh, at face value, but like we know that he was there at 8.44 and we know they died at 8.49 because they were in the middle of active conversations on their phone, on text, and both of their phones locked forever at 8.49 p.m. And then they, you know, the different ways that the phones oriented, it showed that they like had fallen to the ground and all of that. So very, very, very clear that 844 is when he was there and 849 is when they died. So to believe his story, he would have had to have left the second that that video finished filming and like drove that golf cart like a bat out of hell to the house. And then someone or someone had just been somehow waiting nearby, but like not alerted the dogs and knew that those people would be there and that Alex was going to be leaving again at 902. So like they had to get this crime done quickly. They show up unarmed, assuming there will be guns and ammo for them there. Like the idea that that is possible. And then also that they leave no trace. They leave zero trace. They, they use the same tire tread that he left. You know, they don't leave any um, additional DNA or anything. It's like, that's just, and a completely absurd thing. I think he could have had reasonable doubt had that kennel video not been there because he could have said, well, you can't prove where I was for that entire hour. But when it's like minutes, it's like literally four to five minutes that you have to assume that someone else is like coming through and doing all of it. I mean, that's just, it's a ludicrous assumption. So I just think that like the timeline alone even if you don't take into the other stuff into account, the timeline alone to me is proof beyond a reasonable doubt. The timeline with the kennel video. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, Paul seemed like a real asshole and like a really shitty kid. Um, but you know, he didn't deserve a death sentence. Uh, and nobody does. And also, um, you know, he, uh, he kind of solved his own murder, didn't he? I mean, that's pretty damn fascinating. Uh, if you think about it, like even Alex didn't know that he had that video, like pretty incredible, um, pretty incredible story. So despite how I feel about Paul, you know, as, as he was as a person, uh, it is pretty remarkable to see someone really solve their own murder in a way, um, kind of profound. Anyway, thanks for listening. Um, thanks again for all you do. Um, take care. Interesting theory. Uh, yeah. and it, it, there is a lot of, cause it was funny as, uh, Alec always initially said, you know, Paul's a little detective. Paul always catches stuff, which is a really weird thing to say in the police interrogation videos uh, about your son who's dead. He's a little detective. Mm -hmm. Like, what? So one way that can lead you to believe maybe Paul found out some things about Alec that Alec didn't want anyone else to know about anymore. Um, that could be possible a motive there. Um, the only other foreseeable thing that I could possibly lay a, a finger on, and I've talked about this a little bit with some others, of if Alec was not the one who pulled the trigger, was this some sort of a a hit? Was this somebody that Alec had screwed over with money? Because God knows right. Alec was good at doing that. Um, yep. and, and the word cartel comes up. I don't know if it was truly like a Mexican drug cartel or just like a fucking weird backwood South Carolina, you know, drug group that uh, that Alec had been involved with. Because there's a lot of evidence pointing that the money was going somewhere. We don't seem to know where, though, for whatever reason. But the drugs were a pretty heavy thing in his life, and there's no way he was spending that much on drugs just for himself. So did he screw somebody else over on money? Did he owe somebody money? And it was an example. And they, they literally went there to the kennels with Alec, executed his family in front of Alec, said, if, said you're going to take the blame for this. If you don't, we're going to go after your other son. We're going to go after all of your brothers. We're going to go after all their family and their kids and something really horrible. And Alec had the only choice, and maybe Alec did make a good decision here by saying, okay, I'm just going to say I, you know, I'm going to plead not guilty, but I'm not going to uh, ever implicate any sort of drug operation or or hitmen that made a threat against me. Because if I do, all of their lives will be in danger, and at least some will likely get killed. That could be the. So you think only this was thing. a sacrifice of some sort? If we want to believe the Hallmark Hall of Fame version of the movie, where this is how it it truly ended. Um, it could be, but is that what happened? I don't know. I think that's also kind of a stretch, but there's a lot in this story that is kind of a stretch. So could it be? And that, that could explain why there's no other marks. That could explain why there's no other tire marks or anything like that, that he just, uh, you know, they, they came there with Alec almost, you know, at gunpoint saying, here's what we're going to do. We're killing your family. You say anything, uh, you give us that money or more people are going to be killed. Uh, and you say anything about this, others will die as well. Could that be the case? Sure, but who is it? I don't I don't know. Uh, there, there doesn't really seem to be much evidence to that other than just being a semi-logical theory that's not super logical because there's nothing that's been pointed out that proves he was involved in some sort of drug operation other than kind of, you know, fringe theories here and there. Not to say that one of those is going to be legit, though. But he did, he screwed over a lot of people, financially speaking. Yes. And, you know, there may just be this web of financial um, obligations yeah. and people he owes money to. And finally, they said, all right, it's time. Either you pay yeah. up or this is what's going to happen. And that's it's an interesting theory. Those are the people he screwed over on the books and, and with, right? with a paper trail. So who is he screwing over off the books without a paper trail? Could that have been, and maybe it wasn't necessarily about drugs. Maybe it was just about money. Maybe it was just about, you're going to get me that money and you're not uh, in, you know, you're going to not uh, say that I did this. Otherwise more of these, your family is going to die. Could it be there? Yeah. I, I think it, it could possibly be that, but at the same point, he's going along with it and he dug his own grave in this case. So I think he's just as guilty, 
but is there some sort of noble end to this where he was doing this to save the rest of his family? Like I said, maybe in the Hallmark movie version, but is that reality? Nah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I think you're right about the Hallmark movie version. I can just imagine that they're working on this as we speak. Don't I, you think? I don't think Hallmark's making a version of the Alex Well, no, Bernard not Hallmark. Story. Well, they have a mystery channel. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. This seems more like uh, something like AMC or Netflix or something of that nature. I don't know that it's going to be, unless you find some really interesting way to have uh, Candace Cameron rule. <laughs> Play a play the role of Alec Murda, Candace she's Cameron. The wife. No, no, she's going to play Alec. It's going to be a lot of prosthetics. <laughs> <laughs> you loved her in Full House. Now love her again as Alec Murda. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers podcast. The Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Anything is indeed possible. It's 2023. 888-5-KILLER, 888-554-5537 to share your thoughts and theories on the stories that we're covering here for you. Be sure to press subscribe so you don't miss any breaking updates or episodes that we got for you right here. We do greatly appreciate that. Get an ad-free experience on Apple Podcasts as well. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us. 